welcome to Top In Football. I am your first time host, which is pretty exciting. I'm Steve, and I'm going to be giving you my own rendition of the Perfect Players video that went up about a week ago. It's doing pretty well, sitting around about 200 views. Um, since I was unable to record the video at the time, I decided to give you my little critique of how the lads did. If I decided to disagree with them on any of them, which I'm sure we'll get into, um, I'll talk about that. I'll talk about who I agree with, who I disagree with, and why. Um, as I say, it was my idea originally to come up with a video, but with me unable to record at the time. But this is the next best thing, so we'll get into what I thought about the video in general. Yeah. Categories. So that's a lad to talk you through the, the um, different categories the, that we had. Um, I basically come up with it just because I was thinking what can make the most well-rounded player and are there any characteristics a footballer needs if they're going to be well-rounded that they have to have? Is there anything that can't be missing out? And so I come up with long passing, dribbling, finishing, long shots. Set pieces, pace, physicality, tackling, work rate, leadership, match intelligence, and aerial ability. I think without any of those, there's you can still have an amazing player, don't get me wrong, but there can be huge glaring weaknesses in, a, in any given player. So yeah, um, no repeats. Main reason behind that is to keep it interesting. Whether that was actually done or not, we'll get into, but and none of us the, the idea behind it was to not repeat any names. Make it more interesting, and we can argue about it. Yes, indeed. Yep. They so can argue about it, they said. Dead ball situation. Louis, dead ball situations. Wonder how this is going to go, lads. I've gone with James Ward-Prowse. James Ward-Prowse. Ward Good I have stuff. also gone with James Ward-Prowse. James Ward-Prowse again? Yeah. Oh. And um, I too have gone, Mr. James Ward Prowse. <laughs> and guess Notice what? Notice the pattern, boys. I have also <laughs> gone, James Ward Prowse. Hey. Right, we're going to pause it right there. Um, starting off with the video, I went to the lads and said, "Listen, beforehand, should we talk about our picks in advance to make it more entertaining? Should we at least make sure that we haven't all picked the same fucking player?" And the the general things coming back to me were, don't worry about it, it probably won't happen too often. And so watching <laughs> watching the first category to see James Ward Prowse come up four times. Rustled a few jimmies to say the least. I'll tell you that much. But yeah, if, if I'm gonna be honest with you, yeah, yeah, James Ward Prowse is the the obvious choice. I did want a few others in there to mix it all, and they do, to be fair to them, I think they do go on to mention a few honourable mentions, so let's have a little listen. So we have Yay. all chosen James Ward Prowse <laughs> for our dead ball. fucking terrible. <laughs> I don't know, I reckon that's quite an easy one to pick, I think. I mean, he scored three more free kicks like than any on, but... any player in the Premier League this season. It's unbelievable over a free kick, so... To be fair, there are more to it. You could have could have gone on penalties. <laughs> could have gone on corners. So I I personally also had James Ward Prowse down on my list, but was willing to change it to argue maybe a Maddo or a Trent. Let me guess, not Bruno. No, it's not. I was gonna say Maddo. There we go. Yeah, Maddo Cal pretty much summed up with yeah, yeah. was. And should have been uh, one of I'm, the other I'm, choices. I'm not going to put him in myself, but he could. I'd have seen the argument I for Bruno getting in, introduced, well. but at the same same time, I can see why Cal didn't. So Cal's trying to avoid any no one any bias. Very professional of you, Cal. I like it. Which is funny though, because Southampton have the lowest stat of scoring from set pieces. Yeah, but that includes corners as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it good delivery into the box. Yeah. But he is not bad at right. corners either. No. no. 
So while we're talking about um, Benny just threw in a, a little stat thing there as well, I want to talk a little bit about stats on terms of how much weight we place on stats compared to the eye test, the looking at a player and assessing him based on how good he looks. Because certain players can go under the radar because they don't meet that eye test, but at the same time, there are players who look better to the eye than the than the uh, actual stats will reflect. And I think sometimes it needs to be looked into, say, the amount of possession a side has will massively influence the chances they have, the amount of uh, defensive work they end up having to do, and then therefore the amount of through balls they can do, expected goals, chances created, all that sort of stuff. So when I am talking about the picks that I've done, some of them are stat related, and there are reasons that I'm going to talk about for that, but then there are others that have kind of been either players that I've watched personally or ones that I don't think lean themselves very well to stat analysis. Okay, let's get back into it. So that, that, also, that also means... Uh, the players on the end of it. Uh, yeah, and players that and teams that he, they haven't had that many fouls against them. So it's like, they yeah, with with them, um, I mean dead ball four situations, four the lads do quite a really years, good um, job of analysing the chance of like you could have a really great yeah. dead ball specialist that's and just a shit stats. striker on the end of it, and that's that does need to be taken uh, into account, and straight. also the number of One dead balls you're. No, team is winning. Trait, if you haven't got a lot of the ball, you're not going to get much chance to, to show. Vision, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff like that, you know what I mean? On to long passing. So, um, I think the lads pretty much yeah, good shout. got most of the main so, main people I had in ideas I've out. I've got Edison. Goalkeeper yeah. Edison. Goalkeeper Edison. Nice. Okay. Azza? Edison was really interesting to me because honestly... When thinking about the picks, I hadn't even thought about introducing maybe an Edison or any of the other uh, goalkeepers that are really good with their feet. So I think watching this back was one of the times where I looked at it and was like, oh, bloody hell, yeah, that was quite a really good shout. And um, yeah, pers personally, I had I had KDB down or maybe like a Bruno or things like that. And I think maybe... Again, you could argue a, a Trent could be on there if if his long pass. Like, no one's going to argue that he can't pass a ball. The problem is that his conversion, cro like his cross conversion rate, is shocking because because he whips the ball inconsistently because he's a constant outlet on the right hand side for players to look to feed the ball to him to work in attack in. And also when people see Trent on the ball, like nine times out of ten know what he's going to do. He's going to try and get into there so they're prepared for a cross. So no one's saying he can't do a long ball. But the chances are that he would have been very, very lucky to make this list on terms of long passing ability just because of the fact that he's nine times out of ten. He may come out with an assist from a game, but nine times out of ten, they will go to a defender rather than the intended target, even if they are incredibly accurate, you know, and he had to, it's a problem that he's faced with, and he's probably going to have to face for a lot a lot um, of his career unless he changes up his style. I, too, followed Benny's outside-of-the-box thinking and went Edison because, yeah, like, just his distribution... Yeah, two of them said, yeah, I, I didn't have a clue. Second to none. Very fair play and to you. I them. have gone for Kevin De Bruyne, also. Oh, we're on a we're on a two and two. Two on two. I can understand. I can understand the Edison because um, he is the most assisted goalkeeper, is he not? Yeah, yeah, he's got to be up there. A goalie yeah. with the most assists. Uh, yeah, I think he has the most. And not even, not even just assists. The idea like, of <clears throat> not including KDB so, to include him somewhere later as well was quite an interesting idea. I did that personally. I thought about it's just, it's just bang on. doing it's it bang technically on. rather than 
I think if you're I don't think you need to do it here because I think that there are other positions yeah, where you could have other perfectly adequate players and still make a really like well-rounded player. But um, so I, I do think that you could have included have KDB in here or somewhere well, else, or included like Edison or Bruno so here to look towards maybe including or Kevin De Bruyne somewhere else. I don't think we should think tactically like that. I think we should just think who is best for this trade. Mm, I'm not sure, boy. See there, I've just paused it just a second. Carl says I don't think we should think technically on terms of thinking who's just best for that trade. And I think... He's right in certain regards that we do want the best in every category there. But the problem is with a, a player as good as KDB, he's got so many desirable attributes that you could literally take any of them and make a banging player. And I think that's that's the you've got to have that that goal in mind of pick the best player. You know what I mean? Like we've got to make the perfect player. Which one of his traits are so incredible? That they're hard to find a good second, a suitable substitute for, and which ones could you swap out for another players without losing a massive amount of ground with uh, that? I I would happily concede to KDB. Yeah, yeah I, I don't but, mind either. Okay, because um, thinking of like vision and creativity and everything, then obviously you'd be going KDB. Yeah, but if you're going on just like the long passing and the pinpoint accuracy and stuff for over that distance, yeah. you'd be thinking yeah, Edison. No, it's not just like, over that distance. That's, it's not just over that distance. It's long passing, so that can be here to here. But it's like, you can't say... So if if we take away vision and uh, creativity, KDB also is just as good as Edison with the pinpointing. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's no yeah, I think that was a really interesting point Louis made there as well when he said that not Edison can't do everything KDB can, but KDB can do everything yeah, that, that Edison oh, can. So I thought yeah, that, that was really quite um, persuasive, and that's what yeah, KDB is fine with me. made me put KDB so for KDB long passing as well. Is a long passing player. Okay, next trait. Dribbling slash ball handling. I feel like we're all going to have different ones here. Okay, so for dribbling, a very good shout. Uh, Grealish is a solid so shout. I had KDB here, yeah. but obviously you now can't use him. So I would go with like Grealish would have been like an honourable mention for me. No, I if... think I think you should still put what you wrote down, but obviously we've already chose KDB. No, because then you have to take away. Yeah, then you'd have to take away Marnik. So a little bit of confusion here as to what to the Grealish. yeah yeah. What the rules are, the technicalities of the of the thing in general. Yeah, true. So say again, sorry, Benny. So I would change to Grealish. He was like my honourable. Yeah, Grealish, Grealish is a solid shout. Yeah. To be fair, his ball retentions Hazard. incredible. My original choice was Grealish. Um, so yeah, it draws the most fouls in the Premier League. Like yeah. Yeah, he draws he draws quite a lot of fouls. Yeah, is Entries into the box oh, yeah, with no, the no, ball, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, second to none. Like, I honestly could have also gone yeah, with the Dama Traore here. I thought he can. Most, most advances into the box. So completes the yeah, most was, dribbles was very good yeah. in the Premier League this yeah. season, consistently. Uh, think, uh, and regardless of whether he actually does anything with it, I think it's really hard because. Uh, you could right. say the whole, oh, yeah, yeah, he's just a dribbler, but the fact he's got that raw dribbling the ability speaks volumes because he's, he's got to be in those positions to miss the ball and have no end product. And I feel like he, he's got that skill. So I think if we're taking just that attribute, I think we could take dribbling from Adama Traore and still have a really bloody good player. It's not like a vote until we all have to vote. But like, yeah. we, have, we can't argue, say, Pudence is nowhere near the mix. Yeah. Just yeah, like, I'd argue. And I remember, I remember Pudence is probably Watson best of a bad bunch. I don't even think he's the best technical dribbler in his team. <laughs> Although, I suppose there is an argument to be made that the only reason Adama Traor is so good at dribbling is he does the whole tap round and run. So, I'm willing to be persuaded. Guerrero for Louis. 
Yeah. On to finishing Marco Aguero, Vardy. Vardy. Yeah, not a bad shout. Uh, I have gone for Harry Kane. Harry Kane. And I have gone for Edinson Cavani. Yeah, you can. You're Cavani. Sure. Yeah, you can. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. It's proven. The lads were it's right to do it. Scorer. You know that, Cal. I hope you know it. You know we're doing Premier League, right? <laughs> but yeah, um, Cal, over, over Cavani, the here I think the main, over the, yeah. the main suspects came up. Vardy, Abamyang, Kane, Aguero, those sorts of lads. I feel like they were. They were the oh, obvious no, choice. If you look at chance conversion, things like that, are compared to how many chances they get to how many they convert. I think Vardy would have been my number one choice, if we're honest. <laughs> Any of them winning that, though, is incredible. The amount of chances, I think, as well, if you look at expected goals, going back to the stats again, the chances that Jamie Vardy converts are usually lower quality chances that the likes of your Harry Kane and your Aguero's yeah, yeah, end up actually converting. So I think if you are going to go on basically who is the most gifted finisher, I think it's a lot easier to be a striker, a be a finisher in the likes of a Spurs side or a Man City side. But I think Leicester rely on him a lot. Don't get me wrong, they're a really good team. I think they're, they're only going to get better. But I think... I think so. The Vardy's high chance conversion caters to a lot, or covers up, I should say, a lot of Leicester's weaknesses. He's another one. When he's in form, he fucking bangs him in. I think. I think. I think. I'm not going to mention Cavani. I'm honestly not. Cavani versus Antonio. Antonio wins as well. So don't give me that face. Let's move on a little bit. Whereas Vardy hasn't ever proved himself. Yeah, he might have had a goal or two in the Champions League group stage, but. Yeah. Okay, the next trait is long shots. Long shots, okay. Um, I've gone mad over. Yeah. yeah. Louis got it in a nutshell. Yeah, I honestly Ruben thought. Neves. Good shout. Maddo or Ruben Neves. Ruben Neves is a nice. perfectly no, fine shout. Um, he loves one, doesn't he? He loves a pot shot from the edge. I feel like Maddo yeah. deserves to be in the team, though. I'd have put him down, as I say. For yeah, I mean, set pieces, research, he's, he loves like, a shot from outside the box. The of his, so like, accurate with them. I feel like sometimes Neves just hits and hopes. I think that's probably a little bit unfair yeah, yeah, yeah. to him because he yeah, does like belt them. But I feel like on the, edge of his heel the technical the ability in in Madison's striking is just. I did forget that I cut above. I did forget so honestly, that I'd have personally Madison. give it to to Madison. <laughs> he's, to be fair, he's more my style of player. I prefer a player who's gonna have high chance conversion and then have a shot if that's not the case, rather than get to the edge of the box and be like, "Oh Jesus Christ, I'm gonna hit it," just because that's what he what he does. We've seen him do it time and time again on a volley or from from the floor. But when he's playing midfield. For me, John I'd have said, uh, "Oh, John McGinn got thrown out." Um, Jesus! <laughs> no, no, no. That, that, that was championship. He scored a beautiful one from outside the box, but we didn't. Where to go? Down. I just wanted to get. I, feel, I think Fabinho gets thrown in here as well. I think maybe he scored honest, one or two from the edge of the box. I don't think that's deserved, but <laughs> throw it out there. I'll, 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 I'll take it. It's a Liverpool player by all means. I love, I love the honourable mention. Pace, pace, pace. So, On to pace. I've gone with something, and I just didn't think of the fastest player. I've gone with the fastest, and he can keep the ball at his feet. But it's, it's not just because he's fast. It's because he's fast on the ball and off the ball. And I've gone with Hector Bellerin. Okay, so Hector yeah. Bellerin. Louis suggested Hector Bellerin because he's good at keeping the ball at his feet and still being fast, which I'll talk about in a minute. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very I, good track. I went with Kyle Walker. Kyle Walker. Another good shout. Yeah. See, yeah, my mine was a toss up between a few people, but I eventually went for Kyle Walker because he's recorded the fastest speed. But what Louis is saying, Kyle Walker is very, again, yeah, he's ring, ring, rapid, rings very isn't true. He, like I also, um, I had Zaha written down as an honorable mention and Sterling as well because with the ball. So I thought, right, day, I still... pause after just a minute. Um, initially I thought, well, being a Liverpool fan, I thought Sadio Mane and Salah. They were the two first ones that come to mind, being a biased Liverpool fan as I am. 
then I thought, honestly, if you ask every Liverpool player who the fastest person in the team is, those two are in the conversation, but usually, believe it or not, it's Joe Gomez or Virgil van Dijk, and I don't know whether that's just long strides of a centre-back that cover ground faster, but apparently they're the, the quickest in the team, which is absolutely mind-blowing. But um, the, the point made by Louis about having a player who's good with the ball at their feet, who's quick because they've got the ball on their feet, I think dances away from the point of the video a little bit. And Louis won't mind me saying this, he's like, loving like a brother and all that, but like, I think if you're building the perfect footballer, you've already got the close control and dribbling of a Grealish or a a Dharma Triore or a, anyone like that, or you've already got an amazing ball control um, technician. The, the pace is literally just lightning fast speed. So, although Bellerin is by all means still absolutely lightning, I think using him because he can keep the ball at his feet while being fat, by being fast, I should say. Um, doesn't really hold weight with me. Maybe I'm being picky. By all means, if, if you think I am, tell me in the comment section below because I, I could be. But honestly, I'd, I'd give more merit towards Kyle Walker just recording the fastest time in the Premier League because he's, yeah, he is absolutely rapid. And if you combine, again, with the brief of making the perfect footballer, all these with the pace of a Kyle Walker, of a Mane, of a Salah, of a apparently a Virgil van Dijk or a Joe Gomez would make much of a better player than a potentially slower player with better ball control because we're not using their ball control anyway. We're using the dribbling of someone else. Okay, let's go back into it. Pace might chance as well. Yeah, I've gone for Adama Traore. Yeah, Adama Traore is a great shout he's absolutely rapid yeah, again yeah. i chose him for dribbling which yeah, maybe was a short bit short-sighted on me because just, of the fact that he he might do a bit of the hit and hope <laughs> and turn just beat players for for speed maybe he does yeah 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 i suppose willing to admit i'm wrong yeah and how, how many he has it when he's running so like he can't do much when he's running with the ball because then we could have put um Aston Villa's Triore in there as well. Yeah. yeah. Because, uh, By all means, put any Triore in there. They're all rapid. Useless. Name me a slow Triore apart from Could Jimmy. Have had, like Dan James as well. Yeah. No, Dan James. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's like the on and off the ball, which Carl Walker and Bellerin can both do. Mm. Yeah, but I think that's more because they're wing backs. So, yeah. Yeah. Um... Uh, I think I'd rather go with Bellerin. I I, I was about to say I happily happily concede to Bellerin. I thought, I thought he was going to stay on fucking Walker. And then he was like, <laughs> oh, okay, so they've gone with Walker for that. I'll fast forward a little bit up until the next category. Physicality. He's used a player that I think most of us would have put. Let's see who the choices are. I've gone a different route again. I've gone with Raheem Sterling. Sterling. Strong for a little man. so tricky. And he's... I suppose tricky has got nothing to do with physicality, to be fair. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's why I've got, I've got Raheem Sterling. It's a rogue choice. I didn't expect to hear that name. So, I've gone for Adama Traore. Adama Traore, again, he's he's a physical specimen, isn't he? He's lightning fast. He's got incredible technical ability, and so he's built like a fucking brick wall. He is, he is good. He can like bully people off a ball and everything. There's like he can't get tackled amazingly or like often. He just doesn't have the ball control either to be able to like. Yeah. Which. Yeah, but if we're creating the perfect player, then he would have. There the we go, Aaron. Physicality of himself as well. Yeah, you know what I mean? just, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah, 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 that's true. If we're that. There yeah. we just go. A physical stat, then. Good lad. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I forgot about that. Strength, Bring us back on the straight and narrow. Good lad. Yeah. Don't care that you're a fraud, Aaron. I don't care. I love you anyway. Yeah. As near as you have your Alonso. Uh, yeah, I also went with Adama Traore, uh, but I think I was blinkered really, just thinking of his size. Like, um, but yeah. That, um, I personally, I had 
for this. I'm, I'm an hour and about. Uh, Moose yeah, yeah, so absolute nails. Uh, Virgil van Dijk. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you find him off in like shepherding people away from the thing, from the um, from the goal, just with using his size. I think yeah, Adama Traore is a great shout. Moose Zoko would have been a great shout. Or to the end of the old Paul Pogba. <laughs> He's got the grin on his face. He knows as well, Cal. <laughs> He's got that look on his face where I feel like he knows what sort of a shout, shout that was. Why is that a bad shout? Yes. I'll go with Akin Fenway, mate. See you later. <laughs> Terrible shout. Why is Pogba a bad shout? Oh, tell me where he's physical on the ball. Or on he the ball. always always winning balls back and going in for like he's just strong. Tracking back is the physicality. Did I say he was tracking back? No, I said he goes in for a lot of challenges and usually yeah, ten, nine times out of ten will win the ball. Using his strength. Overpowering, overpowering people, and Pogba doesn't overpower anyone. Nah, I'm sticking, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I suppose he... <laughs> okay, there are better examples no, 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 okay. of a physical player uh, that you could have used. I might just turn my camera off and mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll concede to... Uh, uh, well, maybe. i concede out of these four choices, uh, uh, Troy Ray is the best choice. Um, yeah, I think this is one where people might have stuff to say about it because I think there's definitely yeah. other a like, lot of physical the specimens size, in the like, prem, and I feel like you could have, you could have picked like, any like, one of them, as um, Benny's saying. In there as well. Yeah. Don't I mind the shout Raheem Sterling, but I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have added in yeah. there. Yeah, you could have like CDM like type like um, Fernandinho and DD. And yeah. DD, yeah. Yeah, Basuma. He likes a bit. He likes a bit of a tussle in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, my honourable mentions are Foden and Fred. Fred loves. A little Fred's bit. a good shout. I don't think. Uh, but then I didn't want to put I'd him. have Foden in there for physicality. No. Maybe again. Yeah. Like Poggy. He's no, got he good physicality for a little lad, but I feel people. like for a little lad <laughs> or for a. Right. Let's move on to the next. Smaller one. lad. So we're doing Triore for physicality, yeah. A little yeah, bit yeah, yeah, suspect. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy with that. And Adama, not, not... Yeah, yeah, not Bertrand. Not Bertrand. Not Bertrand. <laughs> yeah, Adama Traore. Right, okay. on to the next yeah. category. Tackling. I, um, I, very 2018. I went um, with... I'm oh, gone with I went with wan Saka, honestly. Defender in the league. wan Saka. Yeah. Has that? Yeah, on on research, I went Wamba Saka as well. Um, Wamba Saka is a great shout, shout for this. Me would have been Indeedy because he's also been up there in the Indeedy, the yeah, and... great. I feel like the lads did all right on this yeah, one. I to be fair, Wamba Saka, I think um, he's incredible. Yeah, Wamba Saka, uh, Luke Ailing as well from Leeds, absolutely outstanding tackler. Again, he does have to do more though than uh, Manchester United. In okay. as a as a whole team, yeah, so Indeed, he's very close with him Definitely. having yeah, a lot more traffic team coming team. their way, being from Leeds, being a Leeds so player, man, you don't have to do as much defending, and as a result, it's it the, the fact that right. Wan Bissaka has got higher tackling numbers than Ayland yeah, like said, at this point is, is yeah. proves that he's he's clearly yeah. the, the outstanding That's choice for this challenge. category. John Stones, yeah. yeah. No yeah, I think there are a lot of great yeah. defenders who can when he's fit. step in and just make really just the, the outstanding tackles. Again, can't say a few years ago, indeed, the yeah. Fabinho has a really good knack of just like using these bloody telescopic legs to just wrap around the ball and then he's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. That's why he wins for sure. It's a shame that it feels like tackling's a dying art at the minute. Right. Work rate. I wrote this, knowing right. that I'm going to get shit. It's Bruno. With work rate, I honestly didn't factor in attacking yeah, versus defensive work rate. I just factored in work rate yeah, full stop. Like to me, yeah, but doesn't stop running. Work rate. Yeah, no. Uh, I personally yeah, yeah, yeah. put down Robertson. So I went Thomas Uchek. Suchek, Benny come up with, he's is CDM, he's like absolutely defensive. outstanding. I thought but the, I, I didn't know this to be honest with you, but he is the top scorer so and as a CDM, going back, as, as they correctly say, demonstrates well, yeah. 
superb. Yeah. Um, uh, work rate to get up and down the pitch so much. This season, but as a whole, I, I went on Louis' path of thought from last time. I've gone Kante. Kante, yeah. That, that man is like everywhere normally. Now, boys. 80% of the world's in covered in water, water. The, the rest of it's it covered by Kante. Think about it. They say that for but a reason, you know. Almiron. Almiron, he's really. Outside shouts. He does work hard, Almiron, though. Everything I've seen of him, he doesn't stop. Fair play. Bruno, again, I suppose he fills in. He does track back for the team. Um, The reason, I'll pause that for just a sec. The reason I did go for Robertson personally is because, as I say, those work rates on the left, he does seem to do a lot more defending than... um, than you ever really see Trent doing because, as we know, Trent's not the best defender in even in his team. Never mind the world, you know what I mean. He's not attacking is his game. Although the stats do reflect that the most touches of the, of the ball have been had by Andrew Robertson this season, which again you do need to take with a pinch of salt because of. If that was adjusted for possession, you may find someone of a lower team to have uh, more touches of a ball to be on pose- in possession more often and then obviously have to work harder. Um, I think it also needs to be taken into account not only on the ball work rate, how much you're going back like, off the ball work rate as well. I think if you're not having as many touches because you're charging around the pitch, just because you're not in possession of the ball, you're not on the ball, getting loads of touches, loads of passes and things like that doesn't mean you're not working hard for your team. And I think, yeah, the lads did a really good, especially Benny, I think at this point, he did a really good job of emphasising the fact that if you're breaking your back to do all the defensive work and then still finding time to contribute positively in the form of goals and assists, I think you definitely need to, to be acknowledged for that. And I think... I was a little bit short-sighted with this one. I think I was a little bit too Liverpool-centric, as I'm often guilty of in picking it. Uh, I went for someone who, based on the stats, was on the ball more than anyone else in, in the Premier League. You can see, obviously, because he's... Um, I don't like Bruno. But, but with his work rate alone, I'm happy to take him out. No problem. I think Suchet should be the one, to be honest. Just for him positioning on being the last ditch defensive person and then being up there and being able to score as well like and also like, again the, um, like the ball stats ball, do reflect that someone like a Luke play Ayling play as well should be really ball. high up in this so Even I think that, an honourable mention um, behind like, Suchek should have been maybe know, Ayling because he bloody, is absolutely and everywhere and on terms of touches yeah, considering yeah, the fact that um, the possession that Leeds are allocated is nowhere near the likes of a Liverpool or anything like that. I think he definitely, for his work rate, even just getting so many touches on the ball needs to be acknowledged. A couple of honourable mentions, I might get a shit for this, but Saka and Tierney, I know they're both Arsenal players, but this season I think they've they've shown quite a lot. Saka and Tierney's not a bad shout, as two lads are just... Don't stop. I think any wing back, I think, is a you get fair value for for suggesting them for work rate. I think you have to be in in today's modern game. You have to be a really active player if you're gonna be a wing back. You need to be a massive part of your team. You need to be up and down the pitch, and you need to be good in all areas. In the same way, a midfielder needs to be. I think you could put any like Villa, West Ham, maybe. Maybe even Southampton here for any Villa, West Ham or Southampton player in here for when what happened, like how close they were for going down last season. Yeah, the idea of putting relegation candidates in for work rate just because of the fact that they're every week, week in, week out, they're going to have the the lower end of possession and they're going to be not on the ball as much and so they've got to work hard. I think there's some merit to it, but I think there are limits to how much credit you can give to someone for needing to try harder because they're on a shitter team. It's not It's not a really high work rate. It's not Kante's fault he plays for Chelsea. You know what I mean? Uh, for instance. Right, let's go to the next category. Heading ability. I've gone with 
Tom uh, Tom Calvert Lewin because he's uh, yeah. better than anyone else. In the DCL's not a bad shout. Yeah. So I went a different route and I went with a defensive header. I went with Michael Keane. Michael Keane's fair shout. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the thing. heading ability is very open, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Has a uh, if we had I... attacking heading, I would have gone Calvert Lewin. I think. I looked at it and thought defensive, like yeah. a lot of the time with the crosses coming in, you need to be able to use your head there in that situation to clear it. And that's why I went for the defensive route. So, yeah, I too went Michael Keane, but had literally written down here, but Calvert Lewin for headed goals. Uh, Cal- uh, sorry, Michael Keane. Okay, so with aerial ability, um, I think if you hadn't have given work rate to Suchek, which I didn't. I think I had to put Suchek in here on terms of just how much he wins headers. He's just absolutely all over the place. Defensive headers, attacking headers. He just wins so much in the air. You also could have gone for Virgil van Dijk. I know he's not flavour of the month at the minute with him being out for the majority of the season. But I think people sometimes forget how much of a dominant aerial presence he is. Of course, scoring on his debut for... For Liverpool in the derby winning us the game, which is always nice to say, isn't it? Um, I think Dominic Calvert Lewin is a perfect shout, um, providing such a good threat for Everton in the final third. That, yeah, I suppose Michael Keane does go unnoticed at the time, so it is quite good that the lads have noticed that. But, um, yeah, I think personally, I'd give it to Van Dyke or Dominic Calvert Lewin, if not. Suchek, but obviously they put Suchek in somewhere else, which I think is probably better. I think there are much more better headers of a ball than there are other workmen who will work as hard as Suchek. So I think, as I was saying before, we're making the best footballer, so don't blame them for it. Carry on. He's also had a couple of headed goals uh, this season. Um... But yeah, like aerial jewels, like clearing the ball and also having that chance to score as well. I think Michael Keane's like very decent. Yeah. Um, I've gone with Olivier Giroud. Giroud, I've put down a Cal suggested for uh, well, Giroud for aerial ability. Um, I put him in a different category, to be honest with you. I'll, we'll probably get on to that in a little while, but... Um, for me, I'd, uh, he's not good, um, outstanding yeah, yeah. in the same way that the others are. I feel like, by all, by more, by all means, I should say, by all means, he's adequate at head and uh, he's by no means terrible at head in the ball or anything like that. But I feel like, big man in the middle, winning, winning headers. Yeah. I'd give it to all, all the others over him. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like Carl's, Carl's going to think this is a bit of a personal I mean, attack on him, yeah, to be honest, yeah, I feel like I his shouts haven't been my favourite ball. No, 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 the only, like, the only thing that he's got... Yeah, I feel like slabbed. the others were, were better the shouts. Like, Personally, yeah, I wouldn't have given it to Michael Keane, I think he's probably not been no, the best aerial fair. threat in his team. He has scored from headers, but... good, good in the air. Yeah. So I'm not mad at it, it's Everton, isn't it, you know what I mean? It's a good mention. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's done it on international level as well, so I think... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's B-Tech keen, pretty much. Intelligence. Right, match intelligence. (sighs) Suchek again. He's done himself really, really proud this season. I think he could have been in so many different categories. Phil Foden mentioned there by Louis. He can read the game better than most people, and he's he's 20 years old. Yeah. Yeah. Very good match intelligence for a young lad. Benny. Yeah, I suppose he's he's under Pep, isn't he? And he's surrounded by so many incredible players. Because I'm gonna like not base it on stats, but include stats. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And I think Louis has said before that this stat is a made up stat. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna go with Virgil Van Dijk. Yeah, Benny went with Virgil so, Van Dijk. Probably a good shout. Just, like based on an example of his, so. A game, I think, against Spurs, I think, last season. Or right, he's going to mention the he time was, where... Two-on-one situation. He assessed the situation. Musa Sissoko is running at Van Dijk, and Son is just on the outside. And 
close down the angle. And, um, so that they it comes to the point where Van Dyke's got to choose. Does he block off human against, human um, son from getting the pass and obviously scoring, uh, or does he shepherd Musa um, Sissoko onto his bad foot so he blocks the pass for as long as he can until Musa Sissoko has got to take on the shot. Pushes him onto his left foot, and then closes the shot down, completely alleviating the, um, the match opportunity to score, which I think it was absolutely excellent, don't get me wrong, but I think if, yeah, you could absolutely make an argument for Van Dijk being here. Me personally, I put, just for their match intelligence, I put some more of the, um, the older heads in the Premier League, I put James Milner, Put Olivier Giroud, I put Jean Moutinho, all these more I older, can, kind of more seasoned yeah, heads in the Premier League who can just no, manage a game, to be like the, do what needs to be like done. Like you can give them any job on the park, basically, and they'll come on and have a little go for you. Like Giroud, if you need them to try and grab a goal, he'll try and snatch at a goal for you if you want him to just to hold up play or time waste or anything like that. I think James Milner as well, just on terms of his flexibility on the pitch. I think if you could so ask a player to come up and play winger, play cam, play bloody right back, left back, centre back, wherever you need them, that takes an incredible amount of match intelligence to understand the requirements of each position, to understand the how that position fits in with the rest of the team as well, I think. Excellent. McTominay, not bad, yeah. Not bad. Very young, so he's only going to get better. Same with Foden. He's only going to get better, so there's still a lot to be learned there. So I think maybe if we did this in, say, 10, 15 years' time, which I probably won't be, um, if we did it in 10, 15 years' time, I feel like they could be up and up and thereabouts. But I feel like you've got to give it to, on experience alone, I think you've got to give it to some of the more seasoned heads. You've got to give it to your Van Dykes, your Milners, your Giroud, and your Moutinho's. Let's go with Van Dyke then, yeah? Van Dyke wins this one, I think, rightfully. KDB could fit in every single one. Yeah. Yeah, he could. Okay, so Van Dyke for match intelligence. And the last trait, leadership. Yeah. I've gone with Declan Leadership, you went for Declan Rice. I went with Jordan Henderson. Hendo. I think you can all see where I went. I too went with Jordan Henderson. And I three went with Jordan Henderson. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're a great deal. Apart from like if you look at someone like Jack Grealish, you had to lead by example. I think there are not a massive amount of um I told you I didn't players who can take the thing of leadership over Jordan Henderson. Um, the lads do a great job here of analysing how he had to come up from not being in our good books, to be honest with you, being a Liverpool fan when we had him out on the right mid or things like that. We wanted to swap him for Gareth Barry at one point. We wanted to swap him for Clint Dempsey at another point, I think. When you've been so unfavoured at a club to manage to win them back through just sheer desire, leadership qualities... And just devotion to one club, I feel like it's absolutely leading by example and by leading through being vocal and through your instructions and things like that. I feel like um, the likes of your... It's the difference between your Gerrards and your Carragers, okay? So being, being a scouser and being from Liverpool, I can only really... Talk where I know. I'm going to pause that again just so I don't miss any of the, um, the big enough Jordan Henderson while I have a little chat. But um, yeah, the difference between your two different style of leaders that you can, can go for, for for leadership are on one hand you've got your you've got your Steven Gerrards, the lads who lead by example, who will grab your team by the scruff of the neck when they're playing Jimmy Triori, Harry Kuehl, and fucking Vladimir Smitzer in the same team and drag them to a Champions League victory. You've got that type of player who are outstandingly the best player on the pitch. The rest of the squad knows it, and so they want to appeal to that player. And so they just basically work their ass off for him to be as good as he is. And I feel like Gerard was that man for a long time. And I think on the other side of things as well, you had Carragher at the back who was so vocal 
wasn't the superstar that Gerard was, wasn't the global phenomenon, wasn't the attraction or anything like that that, that Gerard was at his peak. And so had to just be vocal, had to read the game differently in terms of giving the right decisions when it mattered, motivating with giving someone a, a good bollocking if they need it, encouraging, get putting an arm around someone if they need it as well. I feel like the other side of things was your Jamie Carragher's, your people who were going to do verbally what they couldn't do with their feet. And I think, honestly, Hendo's somewhere in between that. He's not got the vocal ability of a Jamie Carragher, although you will find him talking his way through football games. He's not as, a, I should say, he's not as verbally aggressive <laughs> as a Carragher, but he has got the ability to coach, to micromanage, to talk his plays through a match in an encouraging way. And I don't think he's got the star quality of a Gerard, but I do think he can lead by example on terms of like your work rate, your constantly chasing the ball down, your pressing, your going for the second balls, all that sort of stuff, the uplifting stuff that you really look to your captain to try and demonstrate for you. He's not going to be the best player on the pitch. But he is going to try harder than any player on the pitch consistently. And I think that's why there are very few other players who you could put for leadership than Jordan Henderson. I think, as I said, Jack Grealish, Jack Grealish would have been a shout. He's more of the Steven Gerrard type that basically, I know I'm the best player on this pitch, so watch me score goals and try and keep up. Just fair enough. Um. Yeah, a few players have done that over the years for various different clubs. Let's uh, tune back in to see what the lads are wow. saying about it. So he, he just out there, like, just giving support to his team, bringing him up, like, picking him up. Yeah, there was a video of him controlling the game, but he was telling the other defender where, what to do while he's chasing down a player. He said, run on his left. He's like, run on his left, run on his left. So then he'd run on his left. The player would then have to go push away from the goal. So yeah, like, talking about you can't see that when you're in the his little tiny little nuances and, and instructions that make such a difference because maybe taking a stand back you can see things you can read things that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. I thought it was Robbo. It was Robbo. It was Robbo. Okay. Well, yeah, Robbo. So, something like that. Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that clip. But yeah, I think we've made a pretty good player there. So we've got our perfect player. I'll have animations and stuff up on the screen. So, the player they, the lads have ended up with. Not a bad player, I'll be honest with you. Um, quickly to summarise, James Ward-Prowse, I'd have gone with. Kevin, Kevin De Bruyne, yeah, spot on. Dribbling. Jack Grealish, I'm not mad at. Uh, I'd have argued maybe... Adama Traore personally, but again, he does operate the sort of a hit and sprint round the other side. Uh, finishing, I'd have made the argument for Jamie Vardy personally, but I can see why Kane got in there. Ruben Neves, um, yeah, long shots, him or Maddo. I wanted Madison in the team, he's more my style of player, but I'm not angry at Ruben Neves being in there. Hector Bellerin, wasn't happy with the on the ball, off the ball stuff. But I'd gone with maybe a him or a Kyle Walker anyway, just because of the other the other attributes from the other players were the made up for not being as comfortable or as fast on the ball with just sheer lightning pace. Um, physicality, can't look past the Dama Triore. Tackling, Aaron Wamisaka, absolutely superb. Lead by example. Um, and has the highest tackling numbers in a team that may not absolutely have to do the most defensive work, which I think is more to his testament. Uh, Michael Keane, um, not a bad header of the ball, but not who that I've gone with. Maybe a, a Virgil, but then if you've included them somewhere else, maybe I'd have looked to include maybe a, a DCL, 
just for the, the impact he has on his own team. I'm not mad at Michael Keane, though. Uh, work rates, check, absolutely fine. Yeah, I didn't think of it initially. I went with a, a wing-back, but not mad at check at all. Uh, Virgil van Dijk in intelligence, very clever player. But then again, I'd have gone with someone with like Milner for more of the adaptability that he brings to any sort of setup he's a part of. And uh, leadership, as I, as I just said. Hendo's probably the outstanding candidate in the Premier League for that. Okay, so that has been my critique or my goggle box, if, if you will, of the perfect player. Um, I thought it wasn't bad, to be honest. I think the lads did a pretty decent job. Uh, hopefully next time I'm there to take a part of it so that I can be a part of it as well. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this as well. If you want to see more of me on the channel, if you want to see more of me doing these sort of vids, where I'm critiquing some of the stuff that the lads have already come up with. Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, hopefully, if you've got any more ideas, if you agree with us, if you disagree with us, again, let us know that as well. We want to know all of that in the comments down below. Um, I've been Steve from Top Ends Football. You've been watching. Thank you very much. Like and subscribe for more amazing content. Putting amazing stuff out pretty much every other day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. Live streams. You've got quizzes, which I present. They're absolutely amazing. Have a little look at those. Um, you've got pre and post weekend analysis of all the games that come up, whether it be cup games or league games. So, um, yeah, get involved. There's plenty there to um, get involved with. And um, see you next time. Take care.